Last week, Adobe added a lineup of significant upgrades to the Creative Cloud software, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Camera Raw, Premiere Pro, and Illustrator, the main software title that I use for my digital workflow, and I'm sure most digital creators would agree, has to be Photoshop. I use it to create the thumbnails on this channel, social media posts, screen overlays for these videos, and to perform advanced edits on all of my photos that I take with my Canon cameras and even the iPhone. Now, Photoshop has come a long way over the past few years in terms of performance and features, but one of the most useful upgrades I would have to say has been the Select Subject Tool. Without it, making a selection around a person or product requires a fair degree of patience and time and even mastery, you could say, over various selection tools such as the Polygon Lasso, the Path Selection Tool, and more. But when Adobe released the first version of Select Subject, powered by its new artificial intelligence engine called Sensei, in January of 2018, there was this promise that the tedious task that could often take 10 to 20 minutes per subject, sometimes even longer, could be reduced to just a matter of seconds. However, I felt that in its initial release back in 2018, it was just less than perfect. Even though you could go in and edit the mask and eventually get a decent cutout, it just felt like way too much work and required too much effort and decision-making for a tool that was supposed to use AI to do all of the heavy lifting, so to speak. But all of that is about to change with the 2020 update of the Subject Select tool. I tested it out with a few images and I have to say, it certainly has come a long way in just two years. True to the nature of AI and machine learning, it's evolved to now become a more accurate and useful tool than ever. So let me show you just how good it is by demonstrating the tool with a few images presenting their own unique challenges when it comes to image cutout. Okay, so let's start with our first test image. This is a stock photo that I used a while ago on a social media post for a client where we wanted to cut out the model and put her on a yellow background. This was a couple of years ago before Select Subject was around and I remember it took me at least 15 to 20 minutes to get the cutout just right. So this is gonna be a really interesting test as I can compare it with that previous experience. So as you can see, I've already created a layer and filled it in with a yellow background. So the first step is to tap on the photo layer above to make sure it's selected and then enter the select subject tool. There are two ways to access it. You can click on the magic wand tool, which is the fourth icon on the toolbar to the left and you'll see a new select subject button and select and mask button next to it. So to get the selection happening, simply click on the select subject button or you can use the top menu select then in the drop down menu, click on subject. When you do this, you'll see that a selection is created in a matter of seconds. And at first glance, it looks pretty amazing. In fact, I'd have to say almost perfect. However, there are a couple of things that I'd wanna take care of, which I can do by making some adjustments to the mask. So to do that, I'll click on the select and mask button at the top. When you do this, you'll see a properties window on the right hand corner and you can adjust the way you're looking at the mask by default it was set to show the layer below but if you prefer you can view it in onion skin mode with a red mask black or even a white background or in the mask view mode which shows you the mask in black and white i'll stay in the layers mode for my refinements keeping that yellow background behind the subject and the first thing i want to do is get rid of the yellow patch that you can see right next to the left arm of the model, along with some of the bark from the tree branch under the model's right foot. To do that, I can click on the quick selection tool brush on the top left, tap on the plus button to add to the mask, and then paint over the yellow patch. So with those small and easy to perform refinements, we now have a perfect mask. Let's take a look at the next test image. And this one is a photo I took a few years back in my studio. And at the time I was collaborating with some amazing talents in the local Melbourne fashion scene. As you can see, the theme was metallic and it would be great to see a metal sheet behind the models rather than that gray backdrop. So what I wanna do obviously is make a cutout of the two models and place a gold layer beneath. So in preparation, I've already created the gold layer underneath the photo of the two models. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I did earlier and use that select subject tool just to see how well the select subject performs the cutout when we have two 
models in the scene. And as you can see, the speed is just the same. The basic cutout is created in a matter of seconds. And again, it's nearly perfect. The top left section of the model with the foil in the hair hasn't been cut out correctly and some of the stray hair has failed to be cut out. So I can go in and again, use those refinement tools to adjust to the mask by adding and subtracting as needed in order to get a perfect mask. But that's only gonna take a matter of minutes in order to get that final refinement. And again, I might wanna use the tools in the right-hand column in order to adjust the strength of the mask, the softness and the edge just to make it a little bit smoother. And when I do that, it looks pretty amazing. So in that second test, I've got to say it's done an amazing job. And finally, I've got a product image of the Canon EOS R, which happens to be the camera that I'm shooting this video with. Now I want to cut this camera out from the wooden bench that it's resting on. And normally this would be a pretty easy cutout. You can use a quick selection tool, but the section below where the wood is uh, underneath the camera would always present a little bit of a challenge and require uh, extra work. So if I hit the select subject, let's see what happens here. Now, as you can see, it has done a very good job of cutting out the camera and understanding the difference between the wooden surface that it's resting on and the white background. And it's completely isolated it from the background. However, where we have a slight shadow below the camera, it hasn't successfully picked up that edge. So I'd have a number of options here where I could use the paintbrush again, or I could use a polygon lasso tool in order to create a straight line over the mask. And there you have it. That's all I would need to do to get a perfect mask on this particular subject. So in summary, I think it's come a long way from 2018. And as I demonstrated, the first selection of your subject is going to give you a near perfect mask. If you're using these photos for social media, very small images, for example, you could get away with that first instance of the mask. But if you're producing a professional image that needs to go out to print or is going to be blown up to a much larger size, then you'll need to go in and make a few small refinements to get that perfect mask. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.